What's up, Lighthouse? Listen, welcome to the Lighthouse Experience. We are so excited to have you here today. Listen, we have an amazing service that you don't want to miss. So go ahead, share with everybody you know. We can't wait to see you inside. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give God glory wherever it is that you are. We want to welcome you once again to another Lighthouse Worship Experience. It is prayer time here, and let's just give God glory wherever it is that we are. Father God, we thank you. God, we magnify you. We know that you are the King of Kings. We know that you are the Lord of Lords, God, and we extol you, Lord God. We boast, Lord God, in your name, and we boast, Lord God, in your presence, Lord. There's nobody like you. There's no one who can do it better than you can, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the one who stood from age to age, oh God. And we just thank you right now for your grace and your mercy, oh God. We ask you right now, Lord God, to forgive us, oh God, because we have absolutely been disobedient, Lord, as a body, as a nation, Lord God. We just ask you right now, Lord God, as we repent unto your feet, oh God, that you forgive us, Lord God. Hold back your wrath, oh God, for your name's sake. Hold back your wrath, oh God, Lord God, so we can give you all the praise that you do, that you may not cut us off, oh God. We ask you right now, Lord God, that you are gracious and merciful, that you have stolen upon us, oh God. We give you all the glory that we can, oh God. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, oh God. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Yeah. 
boldly declare this And even when I don't see it, you work Even when I can't feel it, you work it You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop My name is Pastor Keon Henderson. I am absolutely honored to give leadership to the Lighthouse Church here in Houston, Texas. And I am so grateful that we have this opportunity yet again in the middle of the week to give you some fuel for the week in what we call Tackle the Text. But this week is going to be different. We're going to change it up a little bit. As they say, guys, change the game. And with me, I have Pastor Torrance, Pastor Rama. And Pastor Hammond, today we're going to do it differently. Normally, t- tackle the text is us tackling the text that I preached on Sunday. But we came back this Tuesday. We're going to change it up a little bit. These guys have randomly selected a scripture that none of us have had time to prepare for. So we're just going to take this scripture and we're going to test our Bible knowledge to see if the word has been hidden in our heart. So yeah, if yes. we fail, it's our fault. Ooh. If we succeed, it was the Lord's doing. And Ooh. so we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to be with us today. And I challenge you uh, to be studying uh, and looking up answers with us so that way online 
you can help us in the dialogue. And to all of our 2.0 members, Lighthouse 2.0, we're so grateful that you are here with us and we'll be having a conversation with you very, very soon. How are you guys doing today? Awesome. Doing Everybody's good. Everybody's doing awesome. good? Wonderful. Are you guys ready for this, for this version <coughs> of Tackle the Text? I Lord believe so. I believe we're ready. You believe so? So we picked uh, Genesis uh, 41, 41, 41 verse 14 through 16. Pastor 16, Raymond Rita, you seem like you already have it. Um, so Genesis 41, verse 14 through 17, it says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, changed his clothing, and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to him, I have a dream, and there's no one who can interpret it. But, but I have heard said of you that you understand the dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not me, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, behold, in my, in my dream, I stood by the bank of the river. Then he went on to explain his dream. The first thing, without having read this, at all. The first thing that comes to my mind is this is Joseph. Yes. Now, we all know that Joseph was his father's favorite son. Yes. We know that he had a coat of many colors. Some say yes. a purple coat. Yes. Um, we know that he eventually becomes the prime minister mm -hmm. of Egypt, although he is not an Egyptian. Yes. But when I look at verse 14, he has a dream. God speaks to him. Um, the brothers <clears throat> are bowing to him in that dream. Mm -hmm. So we, we got all of that. He's been accused of here. rape yeah. yes, by Potiphar's wife. He's been thrown in a pit by his brothers and forgotten. and forgotten by his brothers, but he eventually becomes the prime minister. And I, I, I saw something very, very key to me, that you can look at a person who has all of this favor coat of many colors. The favor of God is with him everywhere he goes. He's his father's favorite son. He's, the, he's second in command in Egypt. He's, he's a prime minister in a nation that he's not even from. Mm. <laughs> and yet we find him in this text in a dungeon. Mm. My goodness. And how many people look at a life of Joseph and say, Joseph had this and Joseph had that. But how many of us are willing to recognize that we never get to deliverance without first going through our dungeon. Yeah, absolutely. You, you don't see David going straight to the kingship. He's found in the cave of Adullam. Yes. You, you don't find Gideon just as a mighty man of valor. You see him cowering down yes, in a wine yes, press. Sir. You don't see Jonah just being one of the greatest preachers to ever live. You see him in the belly of a fish. And how many people are willing to be in before they can speak out? That you have to be in something, you have to be in a dark place, that you have to be in a dungeon, that you have to be in a pit, that you have to be in the belly of something. And I think that as we open up our discussion, how many of you all guys, you know, just and, and hop in here, how much of you was developed in something, in something dark, in something painful, in something cramped, in something tight? Well, I can, I can go first. I, I'll go first because I was just talking to somebody uh, about this early in the week where, okay. where um, I was telling them that that purpose, because we can call Joseph a man of purpose. Mm. Joseph reached his destiny, and if you look at the scripture, you would say, yes, he was a man of destiny, he reached it, he, he was a man of purpose, but I was talking to someone earlier this week, and I said that purpose isn't always comfortable. Mm. That, that we have to go through uncomfortable situations to get to that purpose part that we call the part where God has designed us to be. So I said, well, you know, we can look at Jesus. He was the same way. That, 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 the, that even though he was a sent man, he was sent to something, the cross came with it. So why in the world would I come to be a savior but have to die? Yeah. Look at this, Pastor. You just said something that blew my mind. Wow. Here you got a God that's so big, the Bible says that he's, he's, he has a name above every other name, right? Yes, sir. And we know that God is so big. What, what is the old song that we used to sing as a kid? He's got the whole oh, world in his hands. The yes, God yes, who's so big that the world can fit in his fit hand. right here. Yeah has shrunk himself to fit in the womb of a woman. Look at oh how uncomfortable it must be oh my for goodness. something so, so big, big to, to be in something some, so, small. so small. And the womb is bigger <laughs> than the, the, the tunnel that he has to come through Ooh. 
in order to come into the world. And so is it then plausible to say yeah. that the only way to big stages is through small openings? Ooh, Reverend, you saying it. That you have to you be squeezed. That. You got to be squeezed that you, through when, it, man. When Go the, ahead. When the, seed is, <laughs> when the seed is bigger than the womb. Oh, my God. Oh, God. Oh, oh. Did, wait a minute. Did y'all hear what he said? Oh, when well, listen, seed, did you all hear what he said? Seed is bigger. This is the first time Talk, man. that we've ever seen a seed bigger, bigger, than, a bigger than a womb. Please Ooh, elaborate on no, that. No, there is nothing else. <laughs> There's nothing else? Say. Oh, That's my God. No, seriously. But that was I, enough. I, I, that, that was, was enough. enough because when yeah. you were saying he has the whole world in his hands, and when you were saying things like um, um, Mary carried him, actually, he was carrying Mary. And oh. for the first time, it dawned on me that he was giving himself nourishment through whatever Mary had. I mean, everything we see about Jesus and Mary and him coming into the world, it just dawned on me for the first time. When you use that metaphor and analogy that this is the first time we see the seed bigger. And a lot of people are uncomfortable in small spaces. And this is the first time, oh my God, you say it, and we see a son carrying his mother. And for every person who's watching right now who can't figure out why is it that everybody in the family depends on you? Why is it yeah, that you yeah. have to always be the one that, yeah. that saves somebody financially? Why yeah. is it that you have to be the one that pays the college tuition? Why yeah. do you always have to be there yeah. for your niece and your nephew and, and you didn't naturally birth them? Why? Because you're so big that God called you to carry it. You, your, your whole family is on your shoulder. The whole family is on your back. Why? Because you are a big seed. I love the idea that the seed... It's bigger than the womb, and that somebody watching Pastor Hammer needs to know that they are bigger than what they're in. They may be in a small church, but they are bigger. bigger. They may be in a small city, but they are bigger. They may work for a small company, but the anointing that God has on them is bigger. And you cannot always measure yourself by where you are. Ooh. Pastor, can I, can I say something, and I hand off to you, Pastor, Pastor Hammond. When you say bigger, I look at a prime minister because God calls David a man after his, his own heart when he was a boy. And you've taught us that already. And I see Joseph. So God calls us from the end. So Joseph was actually a prince. Hmm. So you can say he was a prince in prison, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is kind of similar to what you were saying, the seed bigger than and where it is. And as I thought about this text while we had this conversation, we always like to say out of sight is out of mind because Joseph was forgotten for two years. Yes. And God did that intentionally, Pastor. I, I thought about it because now we say out of sight, out of mind, but maybe God will rather have the out of mind than having you out of his will mm. because God will protect you if people don't need you yet. There is a difference between when people need you and when people have need for you. Wow. And it's protection because now, actually, Joseph was an essential service. Yes. He was no longer optional. Now, we, during the pandemic, they had elective surgeries put on hold. Yeah, yeah. And I think that we yeah. have to come to a point where we understand God will not put you before a pharaoh just because you need to be there, but because he has need for you. That's awesome. Oh, That's my goodness. Awesome. Pastor Hammond. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Pastor, I, I think about this text, how in the, in the moment of Pharaoh, um, when, when this, in, this, in the first part of the scripture, we see that they uh, run quickly, and he shaves his face, and he changes his clothes, his yeah. raiment. Um, but, but I think about all throughout this text, we see Joseph consistently changing his clothes, specifically his coat. Yeah. And the Lord told me, he said, God had a plan for you before you had a coat. Um, and so because of that, Joseph was a dreamer before he even got the coat of many colors. Mm -hmm. They didn't hate him just because of the coat of many colors. They really hated him because of what dream. he was, <laughs> what he was and what was symbolized. The coat was a coat of power, but really it was a mantle. You got to understand that when God allows you to go through a season of your life, you'll go from one mantle to another. Now he's in jail, but he still has a mantle. And listen oh, to this. Goodness. So you talk about that, and then you make me think, okay, Joseph, he has a, a history um, where even in the scripture, 
when it starts at about chapter 37 in Genesis mm -hmm. and talks about Joseph all the way to chapter 50. Mm -hmm. But if you get to chapter 38, it doesn't even talk about him. It skips to a yeah. whole, yep. uh, a, yes. different, a whole different whole conversation difference. about the seed being spilled on the ground and Tamar mm -hmm. and all of that. So you mm -hmm. got you got him missing right in the middle of his own story. Yep. But but he's the eldest son. Uh, uh, of Jacob by Rachel. So you got that. Uh, he is the father of Iglau, who represented the tribe of Issachar mm -hmm. among the spies. He's the, uh, a son of Asaph, a man who took mm -hmm. a foreign wife in the mm -hmm. time of Ezra, a priest of the family of Shabana in the time of Nehemiah. And you got all of that. But the definition of Joseph's name means Jehovah <laughs> has added. <laughs> Jehovah has added. So, so when you know your name, when you know your name, when you know what God has named you, when you know what God has labeled you, then you got to know that the end is going to be different than the now. Yeah. That even though you're in the pit, my name is Jehovah has added. Even though I'm being accused of rape, Jehovah has added. And, and even though I'm in prison, Jehovah has added. It looks like Jehovah is subtracting, yeah, subtracting, yeah. forgotten. He's lost his brother. He's lost his coat. He's lost his freedom. But yes, what sir. if I told you that what looks like subtraction is actually Jehovah adding? Added. He's adding experience. He's adding testimony. He's adding a prayer life. He's adding strength. And so sometimes we think we're losing something, but mm. that which we gain in the loss makes us understand that Jehovah is adding. And I have to speak to somebody right speak now heaven. that you might be in a pit, but Jehovah is adding. Yeah. You, might be, you might be in prison, but Jehovah is adding. You might be in the hospital, but Jehovah is adding. I want you to know that when it looks like subtraction, God is the only one who can add by subtraction. So, so then Rima made a big play. That's big right there, Reverend. I got to go back to this, this little, this Big Mac he left on a plate, dog. I got to eat the Big Mac. Go get it. Because the Big Mac, he said, he said that, Special that he sauce. was out of sight. Out of sight. So a question popped in my mind. Does out of sight mean out of favor? Because he was down, he was out of sight, out of our sight. Yeah. But he never left God's sight. If his eyes on the sparrow. Oh, my goodness. The reason why he was able to be promoted along the progression. Yeah. He went to Potiphar's house. He became in charge. Went to the jail. Became in charge. Went to the palace, became in charge. Out of sight. But not out of favor. Never out of favor. He was already headed. He was always headed to the palace. Yes, he was. Yes. But sometimes God demotes you so that you can sneak up on your next promotion. Because <laughs> if they had saw him coming, could you imagine Ooh. all of the other Egyptians saying, hold on, I'm, wait, yeah. wait a minute. Wait a Joseph, minute. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I have a birthright. Yeah. I've been here, yeah. right? I'm, 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 I'm worthy of it. I've, I've been serving. I'm why would you go outside? Yeah, oh why would you God. go outside? Wow. To go get somebody. Oh, my God. Sometimes God promotes from out of the courts. Sometimes God, and this is, I believe this. Yeah. The next best preacher ain't going to be somebody we know. Yeah. Yes, sir. The, yeah. the, the, he's being the, formed right now. He's yeah. being formed right now. Yeah. He might be in a dungeon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in the pit. Yeah. Out of sight. Somewhere on welfare. Yeah. Somewhere collecting governmental assistance and benefits. In a store. Somewhere in a storefront with five or ten members. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we'll hear about him or her and she'll come out and she'll stump her Please. heel on the ground and she'll be preaching in front of 20,000 people and we'd have never seen her coming because sometimes God needs you to come up the backside of the desert. Yes, sometimes yeah. he needs you to come out of the field. Go handle your lion and go handle your bear so that way when you get to Goliath you'll have experience. Yes. Sometimes you have to understand, thank you Holy Ghost, that it is not confinement it's a container <laughs> that God is actually protecting you from mm. something because the heat of light will expose you prematurely one thing um, I was I was watching Shark Tank the other day yep. and this guy has an invention where you put a balloon inside of a wine bottle and then you squeeze the grapes mm -hmm. and you can actually see the balloon expand because when air gets into contact with the wine it destroys the efficacy of it oh. and so in order to keep wine fresh you have to keep air off of it that's why the cork is there and not just a screw on it because you have to keep the the air and so any time you come in contact with something it decreases your value that, that's what air does to grapes it decreases yeah. the value and so when you when you let people come in your life and blow hot air yeah. Ooh. 
and, and, and you have people in your life just because they know how to talk to you and, yeah. and, and then you connect with it, it decreases your value. Yeah. It's like growing up in Indiana and, and I used to have a 1991 Ford Escort, navy blue on the inside and out. The head gasket <laughs> cracked on it. I used to fill up the gas tank because gas was 59, 69, and 79 yes, cents sir. a gallon. And you yes, put $5 in it and it'll fill up the whole be, tank. Be and you full. can get a Snicker and have change <laughs> left over. You can drive all the way to California on $10 back in those days. But, but the car began to rust at the bottom. And, and I'm not ashamed to say it now. I, I used to, it used to be so much rust I could put my foot through it. And, all, and so we had to put a plywood on the ground and put, a, and I, I want, how did it get there? Because in Gary, Indiana, uh, it snows. And they put salt on the ground. And because the car was old, the salt from the ground would connect with the metal of the car and the salt would win because salt affects anything that it touches, which is why we're the salt of the earth. And it begins to corrode. And, and, and the only thing the salt did was decrease the value and erode away the foundation. And, my, and anytime you allow an element that doesn't agree with your construction, your anatomy, your perspective, the only thing that element does mm. is dissolves your foundation and it's eats away at your efforts. Pastor, so, you, t you talk about that, that place of rust, and it just reminds me, um, I, I was dealing with one of our vehicles in Canada, and uh, it was getting some dust in the car, and, and people were complaining about it. And we took the, they took the car in time and time again, and, and to the point they were really getting frustrated. And you're talking about taking a $90,000 car. You know, you can't take it back to Walmart. Uh, what we found out was that uh, through the rust, the rust had begun to form in a place that we couldn't see. And that's how we have to be guarded by our lives that, yes, we are the salt, but we have to be mindful that sometimes those elements will come into a place that we can't even detect and cause problems that we do see. And, and watch this. Joseph has a dream. Yeah. But there was none. Who can interpret it? No. Pastor, I have to, I want to touch on something you said when you were talking about Joseph and addition, and I was also hearing what Hammond was saying about garments. Because it just dawned on me, Pastor, that there was something, and I think you've said this, there was something about Joseph and garments all through Scripture. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That every time, because you said subtraction, every time a garment was subtracted from his life, it's, it's, it sounded like, or it felt like he went down. Mm. When they took the coat of many colors, he was in the pit. Potiphar, Potiphar's wife took his, his coat, he found himself in the prison. But for the first time, we see that Joseph said, I'm going to shave myself, and I'm going to change my garments this time around. Because I want to be responsible for the next season, and you've preached about the grow-up plan. And I want to talk about the beards and... And the cloth, because I, I, I hear something and I, and I said it to someone, I said, you cannot grow into your next season if you don't shave off what no. you grew in your last season. Mm. And the clothes now yeah. speak about things that fit you. Just yeah. because it grows on you doesn't mean it has to go with you. Yes, Just <laughs> because it fits you doesn't mean it follows you. And of course, coats have labels. So what label has been following you that cannot go into the next season of now, your life? Now, but I want to add something to that, Rep, because you, I know you, this is going to land right on your strip. Because to piggyback off of what Rima said, talking about the culture there in Egypt, when he, got, when, he, when, when he was released from the prison, the Bible says that they released him, uh, but, they said, but the Bible says he shaved himself. Understand the culture there in Egypt that a beard, yeah. fully faced, yes, mean that you're a man of low standard, yes, sir. that you're of poor and meager means. So Joseph said, I'm going to save myself and change my clothes, like Rima said, to get prepared for the next level. But what I thought was, was, was ironic was that he made the decision to do it himself. So, mm -hmm. Nobody had to tell him to do it. They knew the culture. The Egyptians, the Egyptians that pulled him out of, the, out of the prison could say, hey, you need to save yourself, Rima. Get yourself cleaned up. He No, he made the decision for himself. How does that line up with the fact that someone is going to the next level and you have to prepare yourself, like Rima says, for that level? When you're on the particular level you're on, to make the decision to conform to a level that you're not yet on yet. 
the, the way you get prepared for a level that you're going to, yeah. which doesn't represent the level that you're currently on, is you have to have some experience watching the people on that level. Watch this. Talk Joseph rabbi. has never shaved before. Talk how does rabbi. he know how? Rabbi, rabbi. How, how does he Holy know yeah. how to shave? How does he know? He has to know because somebody who had already shaved. He was in Potiphar's. See, he was in, <laughs> he was in Potiphar's house. So Potiphar didn't know that Joseph, he who watching. he's watching. See, and it's a metaphor yes, sir. that if you're going to survive and thrive on the next level, you got to watch how the people on that level shave <laughs> and when to shave. And just because, see, and he waited until it was time to shave. Yes, sir. Because if he would have shaved prematurely, he may not have been picked. See, he's watching Potter for shave, and he's saying, when it's, when it's my turn, when it's my I'm going to shave just I'm like shave that. Just like when it's my turn, <laughs> I'm going to speak just like that. When it's my turn to get money, I'm going to balance my money just like that. Really? When it's my turn to have money, I'm going to make sure that I stay humble like that and yeah, that I yeah. help people like that. You've got to watch people who are sufficient at the next level yeah. so that way when you get there, you shave like them. Pastor, I have, I have a question for you. Um, and just for all of us, just a point of conversation because, man, there's so much in Joseph's life. I'm, I'm not sure we can finish it, but it dawned on me that mm-hmm. he was called to the palace to do what he did in the prison, period. Yeah. Interpret the dream for the prisoner and for the king. When he was interpreting the dream of the prisoners, Pastor, he didn't shave. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Reverend. Wait a minute. Say it again, Reverend. Say no, it no. again. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it for Pastor. You have he, he was... to be careful Cheers. who you shave in front of. Ooh, I see. You see what? You see, you see, I knew you were going to say something about it. You have so... to be careful who you strip in front of. <laughs> Come on. You have to be careful <laughs> who you open yourself up, up to... in front of. Yeah. You got to be careful who you open your mouth in front of. <laughs> because... If you shave talk, in man. front of the wrong person, yeah. talk, Reverend, talk, Reverend. <laughs> it's vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> Pastor, another thing oh, I saw goodness. while you were saying that is they called Joseph to interpret the dream of the king, yes, they did. but he called himself to interpret the dream of the prisoners. Yeah. He, he asks them, why, why? why are you downcast? downcast? So he, a lot of people want to go up, but they don't want to, they don't want to show up. They don't want to show up to do it in the prison. And right now, there is, God says, I hear in my spirit that there are conversations about you without yeah. you even knowing. Ooh. And someone is feeling like you've been forgotten and you feel like there's silence all around talk, you. Man, talk. But the silence you hear is because there are conversations about you in the palace. Yes, sir. And I want to let yes, everyone know that feels like a Joseph. Yes, I want to let you know that sometimes just because people don't call you, Because they have a need for you. Doesn't mean God has not called you to meet that need. Joseph had to step up and he began to meet that need of interpreting dreams. Then he was called. Mm, mm, mm. So he was not called on this level. And a lot of people are sitting now on the pews. They don't want to do it till they are called to do it. They don't want to serve (laughs) until they are called to serve. They don't want to sing till they are called to sing. But Joseph said, I I know I'm called to do it, so I'm not going to wait on a call. Because I've already been called. And when I do what I've been called to do, then I can be called into the palace. I I like the other part about it that in his first episode where we see him having a dream, his dream was rejected by his brothers and even his father. That's correct. For his father said, who does he think he is that we're all going to bow down to him? him. And now he didn't get discouraged even going through the process of being a dreamer. Now his elevation is now higher than just dreaming. He's interpreting the dreams of others. (laughs) And listen to this. Listen to this. His ability to interpret is only appreciated in the area he should be unwanted. Yeah. He, he, he's been a dream interpreter all of his life, all his life. but his, his brother didn't appreciate it. Yes. His, his father didn't appreciate it. It took some stranger yes, sir. who should be concerned about the demise of Joseph. Yeah, yeah. And, and oftentimes your gift will be appreciated in another place. In another place. Ooh. 
The prophet is without honor except for in his own time. Sometimes you won't be appreciated until you find the place that is opposite of the place that birthed you. Jesus wasn't, listen, the Bible says that he could no longer perform miracles, miracles. because they perceived that he was not, not the son of God. Talk, it brother. wasn't Talk, that he couldn't brother. perform miracles, Talk. is that they no longer perceived that he could. Mm, and sometimes mm, your, your abilities are not appreciated where you want to share them. Yeah. Sometimes you got to go to a foreign place. I am not from Houston. Yeah. Wow. I am from Gary, yeah. Indiana, Indiana, born in Gary, Indiana. I grew up in East Chicago, Indiana. I went to elementary in Gary. I went to preschool in Gary. I went to middle school in East Chicago. Yes, I went to high school in East Chicago. I went to Fort Wayne, Indiana to play college basketball and I started a church there and I stayed there for five years. But now I am in Houston where God has evolved and is using me to interpret the scripture in a city that did not birth me because the seed does not always prosper in the ground that produced it. Sometimes it has to be taken to another place in order for it to grow. Sometimes the current pot is not suitable for the current seed. And you know what? I've seen my mama do this. I've seen her do it. My mother, we would go to funerals and my mom was one of those people, and I saw her do this at my grandfather's funeral. You know, they start handing out the, the, the flowers, and, and, and she was one of the people that would take it home. She would take it home, but every time she would take it home, hear me, guys, she would take the flower home, but she would take it out of the current contraption and put it in another pot. Because she recognized is that as long as it stays in the contraption that they brought it in, it was going to stay the same size. And anything that stays the same size eventually reverses and dies. She put it in another pot that allowed for it to expand and that its potential could be realized. And sometimes... Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he doth meditate on it day and night. And he is like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That word planted in the Hebrew means transplanted, which means the tree had to be picked up from where it was originally planted and planted by the rivers of water. Can you survive being pulled up and replanted? Or will you say, I shall not be moved? And God says, fool, I'm trying to get you to somewhere where the water will run to you. And you don't have to run to the water. I'm trying to put you somewhere where the water will find you and you don't have to find the water. (laughs) And it might be a ripping and it might be a tearing and it might be a frustrating moment. And you might have to cry and you might have to shed tears and you may lay in the bed at night and you may not feel like eating and you may feel like jumping off of a bridge. But all of this is process of God transplanting you, putting you by the rivers of water so that all you have to do is have roots and the water will find you. I speak that you're coming into a season where the flow is going to find you. That's it. Just hashtag that. The flow is finding me. The flow is finding me. The money is finding me. The help is finding me. The spouse is finding me. The flow. I don't, I got to stop. The flow is going to find you. All we saw with Joseph is being transplanted. Transplanted. And if you know anything about a transplant, that if the stem cells or the cells or the tissues don't align, the body will reject yes. the transplant. Yes. Talk, See, talk, talk, talk. the enemy put them in the pit, yes, sir. but there was no symmetry. It rejected them. Yes. Then the enemy took them to Potiphar's house, thought he had them, Reven. but there was no, no symmetry, connection. so it Reven. rejected them. Took them to prison, say, I got you now, but the tissue didn't agree. The only place rejected he him. was able to stay was in the place yes. where there was symmetry. Was and I'm telling you right now where he was planted. <laughs> and I'm telling Talk, you right now, man. God is going to make sure that the beat of your destiny will line up with the defeat, with the, with the beat of your defeat. Talk, and all man. of a sudden, you're going to get beauty for ashes. And God is going to give you oil for the morning. And he's going to give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Things are going to start to align. Yes. Things are going to start to get on the same place. Even my enemies, those who are wicked, will stumble and fall. He's going to make your enemies Woo. your footstool. Why? Oh, because talking, he's going to use your gift. Oh, that's good talking right there. He's going to use your gift. The only thing that made room for mm. him everywhere he went was his gift. His gift. Yeah. Was his gift. And if you got a real gift, it works in prison and in palaces. That's it. That's yeah. it. If you if you are if you are a real preacher, I wish that you could see this room right now. 
Because yeah, there's only yeah, three people yeah, in here, but I yeah. still feel the Holy Ghost. I still yeah. feel the Holy Ghost. It, it ain't a thousand people. It's not yeah, two thousand people yeah. in here. If you got a real unction of the Holy Ghost, it works in an empty room mm, and in a full food. room. Yes, if yes, you yes. are really studying to show yourself approved that you yes, might sir. be able to rightly divide the word of truth, then it works in an empty room yes, and it works sir. in a full room. It ought to work at the store and it ought to work at the storehouse. Yeah, store it ought to work in the grocery <laughs> store and it ought to work at your house because when God puts it in you, you can preach in the pit. I bet you he, I bet you he preached to the Midianites. Oh yeah. I bet you he preached to the you Midianites. Know he did, right? I bet you when he threw them in, I bet you he told them the God of our salvation yes, yes. Yes, will sir. save your soul. Yes, I bet you everywhere he went, he didn't change. And the other thing I see is that everywhere he went, he had a coat. Stop getting hung up on what's on you. Ooh. God got a coat at the next stop, and then he got another coat at the next stop. He didn't have one coat. If he only had one coat, why is the other one ripped up and dipped in blood? Talk, man. The coat don't Talk. fight. And then taken to the father to say an animal ate an him animal up. Ate and then him. we get to Potiphar's house, he's got another got coat. Another oh, coat. I came to tell you God got another coat. Ooh. Let him rip that one up. Let him tear up that reputation. God got another one. Let him scandalize that season. God got another one. There's always a coat for everywhere I'm going. A coat for and every and there's corner. Always, there's always a beard. Also, oh. because he lost his beard, but he could grow another one. Yeah. He could grow another <laughs> one. Grow another what one. I liked about the end of the story, as anointed as he was, I don't have to say. as many coats as he had, <laughs> when it was his time that he could have been revengeful, he walked in the spirit of a son and a servant. That's good. And he opened his arms to give what was not there to his family, the food and the nourishment. And he gave it to him with a free spirit. That's, so that's, for those of y'all who are listening, Pastor Hammond, and we're going to close this up. We got two minutes. This is the most pivotal part of the text. This is what he says, what you meant for evil, yeah. God. God meant for my good. The brothers finally get to him. And remember, they didn't even know who he was because he had. Sometimes God wants you to shave so that people will be confused about who they're looking for. So, so Pastor, what he... <laughs> Hold it, hold it. Ain't no, ah! ain't no hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it. They looking so, for a man with a beard. So, so, no, no. so what he shaved like that, in no. prison, he got in the palace. No. He shaved his beard in the prison, and why couldn't his brothers recognize him? Because he had grown back. <laughs> he had grown back what he shaved in prison to a point that his brothers Did couldn't recognize him. I don't look like that no more. Because I grew it back. Oh, just say I grew it back. I, I grew it back. I you took it, it but I got it back. <laughs> you stripped it, but it came back. Came back. And I lost we'll it, but I got it back. got it back. I lost 10 children, now I got 20. Got I 20. lost cattle, but God gave me double for my truck. Double Everything for my you lost. Everything you lost. Oh my God. We gotta go. <laughs> Pastor Hammond, you get you, you get the last go. word. I mean, <laughs> what, what do we say? Oh, he grew it back. I mean, I, it just hashtag, I got it back. I got it back. I mean, that's I crazy. No, this is the first Ooh. time it, it dawned on me when you said the brothers didn't recognize him because of his beard. I said, hold on a second. We just talked about beards. He shaved it. He shaved And he got it back. Yeah. Oh, so whatever you have lost, yeah. you can grow it back. And, and, I know the and, beards have life in uh, them. But just because you grew with it doesn't mean you have to go with it. I love that. And, and, and more importantly, Rima, whatever you decide to shave off, yeah. you'll get back. Mm. Whatever you decide. If you, if you yeah. give it willingly. Oh my God. I'm you, you're not just going to get back what they... You don't just get back what the devil took. You can get back what you gave up. Oh, 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 Jesus, geez. don't make me shout. <laughs> That's the end of this one. That's it. Because that's a personal testimony for all of us up here. I don't know who that is for. But you've been, you've been holding on something so tight that you thought that if you let it go, you were going to lose something. God said, shave it. I'm going to give it back. And when I give it back to you this time, they ain't going to recognize you. It's going to be longer. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be more prosperous. It's going to be extraordinary. Shave it on purpose. Shave it on purpose. I don't know who that is. And listen, you didn't do nothing wrong, but apologize on purpose. Just shave on purpose. That's good. You were wronged, but you make it right. And watch God add to you. This is Tackle the Text. We got to go. We'll see you next week. Listen, I'm still up here with my team. 
Normally we would give you the offering midway, but the Holy Spirit got to moving and we just couldn't stop. So uh, listen, I trust you to be faithful. I know it doesn't matter if we give the offertory appeal in the beginning, the middle, the end. The Lord will touch your heart and you will be thou faithful. I pray that God will bless the seed that you're getting ready to release. And guess what? When you give up this seed, you're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. When you, when you give this seed, you're going to grow it back. What you're getting ready to give right now is not a loss. It is a gain because whatever you give, it's going to come back. And this time when it comes back, they ain't going to recognize you. When you make this next deposit, they're not going to recognize you. When you drive up to the bank in this next vehicle, they won't even know who you are. This next house, they won't even know who the neighbor is because God is about to enlarge your territory. Be faithful. No matter where you are in your money journey, whether you're in the pit, whether you're in the prison, I'm telling you, you're on your way to the palace. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows. That shall he also reap. They're getting ready to put instructions on the screen right now if they haven't already. And you're getting ready to give an opportunity, or get an opportunity, I should say, to get it back. Be faithful. God bless you. We love you. And we'll see you the next time. What an amazing service. If that service blessed you and you haven't had the opportunity to give, we want to put those instructions right here below. And also, if you'd like to join this church, if you love what we're doing here at Lighthouse, we'd love to make you family. We're going to put those instructions down below as well. And lastly, here at Lighthouse, we believe that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, that you shall be saved. And I want to go ahead and pray with you right quick. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much for another amazing service. We thank you for another day, God. We thank you for the opportunity to lift up your name. I just ask you bless everybody a part of this church, everybody who's been watching. You continue to help us abound in blessings. So we love you, praise you, and this is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hey, listen, we love you. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's PK here. And listen, I want to tell you that I get so many DMs, so many messages of people saying, Pastor, how can I connect with you? I love your messages, but going through YouTube is kind of difficult. Where can I come to a centralized place? We heard you. And that's why we created Lighthouse 2.0. Lighthouse 2.0 is our tribe. It's our village. It's the place where all of the people who say, I want PK to be my online pastor. And PK says, I want you to be my online member. This is the place where we go, the watering hole, the ecosystem where we all come to grow together. And it is exclusively for you. They're getting ready to put a link up on the screen right now that shows you how you make that exclusive step. And everybody can't get in. So you better take first movers advantage and get in while you can fit in. I can't wait to see you inside of 2.0. May God bless you. And let's do this thing for Christ.